The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Atlanta Falcons just wrapped up their contest in overtime. It was amazing. A lot of points scored. A lot of fantasy points dropped on the table for us to look at. Today, we're going to be looking at the buy, sell, holds, and trades for fantasy football. There's guys you want to kick to the moon. There's guys you want to get rid of. There's not many of them in this matchup. It went off. It looked good. It was fun to watch. But before we dig in, you need to click that subscribe button right now because we're recapping these games. We're going to be talking about the sneaky starts for week five tomorrow. And then Saturday, we're going to help you set your lineups with these videos. Click that button right now. Stop missing out. But this game was fun. One of the funnest games of the season. This will be one of the funnest games of the year. 36-30, we went to overtime, the Atlanta Falcons won it, Kirk Cousins, 500 yards passing, 4 touchdowns, we have not gotten to say that too many times with these quarterbacks this year, as many of them struggle to break 200 yards, just like Baker Mayfield did today, he did toss 3 touchdowns in this matchup, Kirk Cousins slinging the rock 58 times, just slinging it all over the place. Bijan Robinson here, looking at him in the box score, watching him. He's explosive. You're seeing that on the field. He did have a couple explosive runs, 5.1 yards per carry. However, fancy it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. 61 yards. We only caught three balls for 16 yards. So four points receiving, six points on the rushing. So 10 fancy points. He got you a 10 spot. You might feel okay about it in the box score for your fancy matchup. But when you look at him as being your top pick, you're hating that. You're hating that a lot, especially in a matchup like this where 66 points were scored and it went off the chain. And now you're looking at the wide receivers here. Drake London, 13 targets in this matchup. He got banged up in this one at the end, but 12 catches, 154 yards, and a touchdown. Darnell Mooney went off as well with 16 targets, two touchdowns catching nine balls for 105 yards. They were the show. Kyle Pitts got some opportunity in this matchup. And like what I said in the start video, Kyle Pitts going to Kyle Pitts. You don't know what's going to happen, but Kyle Pitts is like a box of chocolates. And when you pull that right chocolate, it tastes good. Kyle Pitts was tasting good today. Seven catches, 88 yards. Hodge with the huge touchdown to seal it. No one started him in fancy unless it was daily fantasy football on DraftKings or whatever. Ray Ray McLeod, nine targets in this matchup. Six catches, 66 yards. So if you had to start him in a pinch, and I mentioned that he might be a pinch start in this matchup because these two defenses are two defenses you don't want to go up against on a Thursday on a short week. I mentioned that. That's why I was very... Very trepidatious, if that's a word, if that's real, about this matchup with the over-under. Like, it could go under, it could go over. And I was expecting the defenses to do some things, and I expected the offenses to do some things. And it was all on the quarterbacks. And the thing is, everybody did everything. The defenses came out and made some plays as well on both sides. That's the thing about this matchup. That's why this matchup was so fun watching it on TV because everything was going on. It was nonstop action here. Darnell Mooney was the show for fantasy. He was a guy that was a conflict start for a lot of people. Went off. And he's a guy that you had in your flex or your wide receiver two spot who went off for you. Drake London, back to back to back games with a ton of targets. Looking at the Tampa Bay running backs here, and they're just splitting touches. They're just splitting the touches evenly. Even after Bucky Aaron fumbled. And the back end of that game, he was back in there. Two snaps later. They don't care. They're flipping these backs back and forth. And like I said earlier today, the running back that finds the daylight is going to get the yards. It was Rashad White. He had that long run in the second quarter. He's got some pop in the step. Bucky Irvin's good with the vision and patience. But Rashad White does have that pop in the step. They use him in the passing game with these backs. Bucky Irvin, two catches, 12 yards. Rashad White, three catches, negative six yards. So like 2.4 fancy points receiving for Rashad White there. Uh, both these running backs didn't really do enough for you in fantasy. Neither of them scored touchdowns. Wasn't effective enough. But Baker Mayfield had the Konami code today with 42 rushing yards. When you're looking at the wide receivers, Chris Godwin, 
did good enough to make you feel good about yourself. Mike Evans with two touchdowns. Grand. There's 12 points right there in touchdowns. Another five catching balls. Six on 62 yards. Kate Otten got a little bit of work. About seven fancy points. However, seven fancy points is close enough to get you to tight end one status. You're probably a few points away. Kyle Pitts definitely going to be a top six tight end this week. And we got some doozy matchups. I wouldn't be surprised if both these tight ends are tight end ones by the end of the week. And that's just how the tight end position goes. I would not be surprised if the tight end 12 scores 7, 8, 9 fantasy points. He might be 13, 14 range, K. Dotton is. However, that's how the tight end position rolls. That's how it rolls. Mike Evans getting two touchdowns. Back-to-back -back weeks going off. Chris Godwin getting volume still. Don't sell him. Dynasty, his age, his value's up there. So you may want to sell him to a contending team. If you only got one or two wins right now and you're projected to be middle of the pack and might barely miss the playoffs, that might be a move you may want to make and just get out of that due to that. However, we look at this game. It was fun to watch. It was fun to watch. We got what was advertised, and I advertised this one to you. I told you you better make sure you watch this matchup because I don't know what's going to happen, but I know it's going to be fun to watch. I knew the defensive side of the ball was going to be fun. I knew the offensive side of the ball, whether it hit or it didn't, was going to be fun. And this one was one of the funnest games of the year. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching. Catch you on next video.